Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Squawk Out Podcast. This is Joel Benavides. Uh, Bitcoin currently trading at 11,407 even uh, as of 9.56 p.m. Central Standard Time on the 11th of October, 2020. And I am joined by our, my, uh, I guess you could say, uh, acting co-host, Raymond Chapa. Raymond, say what's up. What up, what up, what up? And uh, and I'm also joined by uh, debut film critic and uh, and uh, social worker Adam V. Adam, you there? Hello. All right, man. <laughs> we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll get more out of you in a second. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, so let me just drop this mic real quick this audio um yeah so uh we are joined by adam and uh i wanted to bring uh raymond in specifically for this uh podcast because my uh film trivia information is lacking where <laughs> raymond's is uh, exceptional and so uh, we're going to be discussing that uh Adam, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and start out by, uh, I guess, saying what you do for a day job and, uh, and what, what that's like for you. All right. Well, uh, first of all, my day job is working as a social worker. Um, my job, basically, I kind of work with families and kind of like, you know, help them out with issues and everything. Uh, for instance, families that have issues with uh, medical needs for their children, they can, you know, reach that kind of medical needs. Um, you know, making sure children are safe, that kind of thing. Okay. And so, uh, do you, uh, do you ever encounter, uh, like, I don't know, like crazy shit with your job? Like, yes, I do. Like, I mean, like, have you ever been attacked or spit on or bitten or anything like that? Actually, no, I haven't. And that's one thing. I mean, I actually have gone to some of these homes where, you know, stuff like that could happen. But what really helps you out is learning how to de-escalate. Because I know right now with everything going on, uh, they're always talking about like, well, some of these jobs that police do should be handled by social workers. But, you know, I guess people who are against that think that all social workers are some kind of, you know, um, you know, very effeminate, very like, you know, um, very weak kind of people. But no, I mean, we've dealt with all kinds of stuff. We can go. I've gone to these homes where police have gone to with weapons without a weapon myself and i've never really had to deal with anyone really like you know going crazy i mean sometimes mm -hmm. when i first walk in yeah people are kind of like getting your face and everything but i gotta do is just keep a calm demeanor kind of take charge of the situation and then people generally kind of tend to you know kind of relax a little bit more and just talk to you i mean i'm not i'm not there as part of law i'm not there to arrest you i'm not there to do any of that stuff my job is to figure out what your problem is and then from there figure out what we can do to help you kind of thing I totally understand like the 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 you bring up that social workers like the the stereotype is that they're very effeminate or whatever but I've met a, a few of them and and they're anything but and uh, and you, I can really hear it in your voice man like uh like you've become much more uh, uh what's the word uh, not aggressive. That's too aggressive a word, but I guess uh, <laughs> assertive, assertive is the word I'm looking for. You sound so way more assertive than you did when, when we last spoke. Yeah. Well, I think it's part of that. I mean, it's not, it's kind of like being assertive, but also being empathetic. Like it's like, you know, and, and I'm not saying all officers are like this, but when something like that happens, police come in, they start barking orders. That's not what someone wants to hear at a time like that could get them to be act more um violent that time versus being like assertive yet hey man what's going on like let's sit down let's talk let's get somewhere comfortable where do you want to meet you know i i spend like four hours talking to people outside of the house before they even let me into their house kind of thing damn dude so that's are crazy the, are the home the home checks and everything a little different now with covid uh, i have a family member like an in-law that is uh, um she works for she's a social worker she's been doing it for a number of years and she said a lot of the times they just have to kind of do it over like FaceTime or Skype or however that is. So I've done some of my follow-up visits with Skype. 
Um, but usually the initial visit I do try to do at the home if possible. Um, usually if the children are older, if they're like, you know, 15, 16, you know, generally the household conditions are going to affect the, affect the children as much as like a younger child. Like for instance, the house is full of bugs and stuff like that. Yeah. 16 year old, 15 year old, they can help clean up themselves. But if it's like an infant or a toddler, yeah, something like that's going to affect the house. So I think I've only actually done a few FaceTime visits. Most of the visits have actually been in person. Um, and I just go with whatever our policy is, which is wearing masks. Uh, we also have face shields if possible. And just whatever makes the homeowner comfortable. Like, what are their rules? What do you want me to do? Right on, right on. So um, b- before we move into the, to the, I guess, the meat of the, of the podcast, I think it, it's requisite to bring up how you and I met. Uh, and, uh, and, and we met years ago, I guess, God, how long has that been? Like, t- uh, 20, yeah, about, well, tw- 22, 23 years ago. You're, and- you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh at this, Joel, because you know, the way I am, like, I do everything by movies. We met the summer Independence Day came out. Ooh, it was like oh, 98, shit. right? Yeah, that was a while 96. ago. 96. 96. Well, well, you were ahead of me, right? You were like class of 99, right? Yeah, class of 99. Yeah, yeah. So now that we've dated ourselves and we can we can go on without fear of like embarrassing ourselves any more than we already have. Um, so so, yeah. And, and then, you know, we graduated, like you mentioned earlier, we both went into the military and 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 went on to these other things. But um, you and I really haven't spoke since. Right. Yeah. And I was saying before we came on the podcast that you had a, a completely different voice. And I, I'm sure like our homies that might ru- you know, listen to this later on are gonna recognize that. They're gonna expect an explanation. So, so what, I mean, what happened, man? So I have no problem having an explanation. As y'all know, <laughs> especially people who knew me back then, I was the shortest guy in class. I was tiny. I had a baby face and everything. Um, of course, I didn't really know the fact that I would dress in oversized clothes to make me look bigger, which is the exact opposite of what you need to do when you were short, didn't help the situation. So I would make my voice lower just to appear to be older and everything, just to, I thought it made me sound cooler. You know, I thought I was going to be like, hey, look at me. I'm I'm older. I have the lowest voice out of all you guys. You guys can be taller than me, but I have the oldest voice. Ha ha ha. It so did, yeah, it, my voice on purpose. It always hurt me. Every time I came home, I had to gargle and everything. No, that part is actually made up. That part's not true. But yeah, I would mess up my face. <laughs> it's a sound older. That's crazy. I cannot believe you had the presence of mind to keep that up without an error a single time. Like, I, dude, I would forget. I'd be like, oh, I forgot. I'm like, you know, faking a deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> but well, but you know what? I think you sound better now. You do. You sound I, better I now. Up once or twice. I probably messed up and y'all just didn't notice. They'd be like, hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, God, that's, that's totally not cool, you know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so uh, I, you know, before we started speaking on all of this, I had no idea that you were into conspiracy theory. Now, we brought you on because we we're going to talk about film. And, and, and we'll get to that in a moment. And I, th- I really think that that conversation is going to take primarily between you and Raymond. But I, I'm, I might interject from, from time to time because I do have some film that, that I think we can get started on. Uh, but with respect to conspiracy theory, man, what, what kind of what, – like what, because I think April told me that you were uh, deep into conspiracy theory, which is something that Raymond and I have discussed. Uh, wh- wh- what, what's your bread and butter, would you say? Huh, that's kind of interesting because I know I'm really into conspiracy theories, but I haven't delved as much into it as much as I have, like, kind of like uh, in the last decade. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always I read books about it, you know, harp, stuff like that, how to control the weather, um, you know, certain things. I know there's more conspiracies now, especially conspiracies now in the Internet age. Um, oh, and also we did get into missing 411. Right. And Raymond, yeah. did you do I, your homework? I re- um, so I have a two-year-old, so I started to do a little bit of research on that. And that's the, um, I guess, the parks. I guess people disappearing in the parks. Yes. 
Yes. So I read, I just, I wasn't able to watch the video or listen to the podcast, but I did read quite a bit on Wiki. And then um, I saw a couple videos with just like words, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's, it looks very interesting. So the guy uh, that, well, maybe I'll let Adam do this introduction. Yeah. Talk about David Polite's brother. Okay, so his whole deal is that he's actually made, um, he has a couple of books out there because he's actually cataloged everyone that's actually gone missing from national parks. Um, there actually is no like government um, roll up of people who gone missing in national parks. He's actually done all the legwork himself. It's actually four books. And that was actually still a couple of years ago. It's probably been more since then. But he doesn't really go into like uh, the theories. He kind of touches on the theories, but doesn't really go into detail. It's just kind of more about people who've gone missing. And, you know, it's kind of like spread all over the Internet. And even though it's a it's a creepy pasta or I guess you want to call it a no sleep Reddit story. I'm not sure if you all ever uh, heard of that uh, creepy pasta search and rescue. Briefly. Woods. Briefly yeah. Like, I no. mean, I know about Creepypasta and I know about like Reddit, like they're just basically like ghost stories or people will contribute to the conversation, right? Yeah, um, it's actually like Creepypasta. I believe they made an adaptation under that Channel 4, but it was totally different. Um, but I would actually recommend reading the original Creepypasta, Search and Rescue Woods. Um, I think that's what it's called. But it's actually a really interesting uh, Creepypasta. It's actually several parts. It's actually a long read, but it's broken up into like a little vignette so it's easy to get through but it's just it's just basically a guy who's uh search and rescue uh operations for the department of whatever department is that covers all these national parks and just his stories of how he's gone through and what he's seen and everything well i think he was like he was doing some kind of like education or something in yellowstone right and then he was approached by to uh like a parks and recreation investigators or something like that and they kind of told him that there was something not right with the numbers right yes. the numbers of missing people i should say yes and i do know that uh he also was kind of given a little bit of a runaround when he'd actually requested a lot of these records for the freedom uh, of information uh, act a lot of runaround i mean i think he even went as far as like contacting a senator and the senator or, or like a senator and like uh, like a, one of the main investigators of the Park Service. And like yeah. everybody just a, either gave him the stiff arm, told him to fuck off. I think at one point somebody told him that he would never like get his hands on a, on some case that he was looking at. Even the green, like just to kind of lay out the, the major bullet points real quick. Even the Green Berets, I think, were said to have shown up at one of the investigations and they uh, they didn't participate in the in the collaboration between organizations. They were just like standoffish. You know, they were using special equipment, their own equipment. They just kind of came in and operated on the park during this missing persons case and then just split. Do you remember that? I think I've heard that story. Yes. Yeah. So, the, I mean, dude, I, I, I dug into this for like weeks on my spare time. <laughs> And, uh, it, it, dude, it's so freaking crazy. And like the, the, it's not just missing people. We should say that he has a protocol that he built up over the years. Like, and it's like, uh, like a list of weird things. Like he took all the weird things that happened, like in all the investigations and the way he was able to single it out was he saw a pattern that occurred over and over and over again in like less than, 5% or 10% of cases. And it was shit like, and it, I mean, it's shit that couldn't happen more than once yet. It was happening over and over again with these, with these cases. There was, uh, I don't know. I don't remember some of the profile points. It was, um, do you remember any of them? I think one of them was that they would be found miles away from where they were, when they went missing. And for instance, if it was like a small child, like a toddler, like someone three or four, it'd be like almost impossible for them to actually make that length of travel at their age and through the terrain that they were going through. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah, that, that was one of them. Another one was uh, would often go missing by boulder fields and bodies of water. Right. Yes. yes. And th and that like in every single case he examined, like even though uh look I, I don't think there was ever any body there wouldn't be footprints there wouldn't be animal nation and 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 it, it none of that really sounds crazy we should mention that 
every single time it like happens, like the person's talking to another person and then they turn around, like not even fully turn around to get something from their backpack. And then when they look back in the other direction where the person was supposed to be like three seconds later, they're gone. They're just gone. Like, how does that happen? And there was actually one, I believe a child, this was probably in the sixties. He was actually found alive. But he has no memory of what happened when he was gone. Um, it's actually or, on the no, Matthew Four One documentary. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I watched the documentary, but it was mainly about that one case, right? Yeah, yeah. Like there was, uh, man, there was so much weird shit, you know. Like, and then he started like investigating inside cities, and he found out that like people would go missing inside bars and clubs, and they would check all the CCTV footage. And there was like no way they would have left. Like they went to the restroom and then they were just gone. Um, talk about the inclement weather. Do you remember the thing about the weather? The weird thing about the weather? On the top of my head, I actually don't remember that. Do you yeah. remember? What- well, yeah. Um, it was like, like after almost like ninety percent of these cases that fit into inside his profile points uh like the weather would go bad and it would make it impossible for like the missing uh the 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 search and rescue organizations to do their job Mm. um so what other uh like i mean was there anything specific you wanted to mention about uh missing 411 not that i can think of i mean it was something that i got into a little while ago we actually purchased the books and went through them and everything it's just something that you know it's kind of interesting the fact that people can go missing on these government lands and there's no like record of, there's no like national record of people who've gone missing or what's happened to them. Yeah. That was, that was like one of the uh, uh, political points that he brought up. They would just, uh, it was like the park service was, was intentionally uh, avoiding recording these cases. Right. Did you get that? Did you get that it was like, did you feel like it was an intentional thing on the park services end? Yeah, it looks like they're trying to like, at least if it's not for something like conspiracy related, it's probably for like, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, shoot, I used to be good at words. Now I actually suck at words. But for them not to get in trouble, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like cover up. Liability, liability. That's what I'm talking about. Liability. liability. Like, Man, they, don't I don't... People... they don't want any people what? They don't want all these people like no, all these people are missing from their lands because then they open them up for whatever can happen. I know that they brought that up as one of the reasons, but maybe it was just like the hardcore like conspiracy theorist in my mind that wanted to believe that they were intentionally hiding it, not for any liability purposes, but like for national security reasons. Yes. Right. Like, like I got the idea that whatever it is, that's causing these people to go missing is so fucking out of this world, bad shit, crazy that if they were to like make any kind of public statement about what's happening, it would cause panics. Nobody would ever like leave their house, shit like that. Like I got like a conspiracy theory vibe from that. Yeah. It's one of those things that it would mess with our normalcy bias. And we're like, what? Like this world we understand is now we understand now. Like we don't know what to do. We're going to like, you know, Dogs and cats living together, running around with our shirts off kind of thing. What does that even mean, dude? Raymond knows where that's from. <laughs> Raymond, do you know where that's from? What What did you say? Dogs and cats living together. Oh, my God. Oh, was that a movie? Uh, <sighs> dogs and cats. Oh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters. I, I knew that. Wait, you guys uh, are breaking up a little bit. Like, y'all guys are breaking up. I'm not sure what's going on. Let me see here. Like, uh, you know, we're talking about this, and they're trying to break our feet or something. N- no, man, I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. It's just on my end. <laughs> I think when we all talk together, it kind of starts. Raymond's face is frozen, though. That's all right. It's a, it's back. a good I'm face. I'm back. I'm back, player. <laughs> um, so uh, let me see. Uh, we can move on to uh, from 401. Any other conspiracy theories that you're particularly... Uh, uh into well one uh that you just mentioned right now talking about the uh, people missing um it's something i just barely looked up a few times but it's something that's kind of interesting me is that smiley face killer theory have you heard about that yes 
so yeah so okay talk about smiley yeah i know a little bit about it so it's all kind of it's just been a whole bunch of uh it's usually young men who are about in their 20s who've gone missing and their bodies are always found in bodies of water and there's always a smiley face painted nearby um that's what i really looked up about i know there's two detectives that are actually looking into the theory um but right now i mean they don't have like a list of suspects they don't have much else to go on except that they all follow a pattern all the deaths follow a pattern yeah yeah well and I, and i think that there were even like multiple smiley face murders like on the same day and the uh the the distance between them was so great that like they couldn't have caught a plane to make it there you know by yeah. the end of the day or something and so That's... yeah and so there it seems like there's an organization doing it yeah yeah do they all have something in common, or are they just twenty-something males? As far as I know, it's usually twenty-something males. I think most of them have actually happened after leaving a bar or leaving a party, um, basically leaving somewhere late at night. Usually, they're inebriated, which is why people say, "Well, they probably could have just fallen into this body of water and drowned." Um, but yeah, that's pretty much like the main the main uh, issues is that they basically all leave a party or a bar while still being drunk. But the issue is, like, why is there always a smiley face, like, painted near their, where their body was found or something? It's almost like a serial killer's, like, mark or something. Yeah. Or it could be copycats, too. Like, hey, I'll kill this person and do a smiley face just to piss off the cops or something. Didn't they rule out the copycat theory, though? I think Joel knows a little more about this than he's uh, letting off. I don't know. I don't know. No, I, I mean, I, I don't remember. Um... Uh, you smile a lot. I don't know. Ah, dude, that's there's another explanation for that entirely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, um, uh, so uh, yeah, dude. I don't know, but you guys think we should move on to the to the film? I I think I mean, dude, I can talk about conspiracy theory all fucking night. Do you we do can... you think do you think there's a conspiracy theory, Adam, that has to do with uh, the coronavirus or anything like that? So I was thinking about that, but I mean, like, you know, I, I still trust science. I do trust our scientists and everything. And I know there's not really much evidence that coronavirus was actually made in a, in a lab. So, yeah, I do think it's naturally occurring. Um, but I do think some of our government hasn't, you know, reacted the way that they should have to the coronavirus. Um, I mean, I'm very much on the left side of this. Like, I'm very much like, hey, wear a mask, you know, like, don't do anything stupid. You know, that kind of thing. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but do you think that there's any kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, like, uh, like do, uh, how, how do you feel about like the weaponized theory and stuff like that? Well, I've always felt that, you know, weaponized viruses, weaponized diseases are probably not the best way to actually take out your enemies because you could get sick yourself first. So you do have to be very careful about getting these weaponized diseases out to your enemies because, you know, I think it'd be better if you were actually doing like what Russia does and actually just poisoning them with like a pick from an umbrella or something. <laughs> just like get them. You don't have no, you have no way of getting yourself sick. You're like, ha, got you. And then you kind of run off. And Adam, you're, never later, you're never allowed over, Adam. You're never allowed over. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll make the most out of this time. And, uh, <laughs> And especially if you're carrying an umbrella with you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, Raymond, you want to, you got anything else before we jump on? Um, no, nah, I was just kind of, I was researching a little. He, uh, Joel sent me a whole list on a, um, I don't, he texted me a whole list of things. And I was just kind of looking them up as I could. You know, when my son was kind of just watching TV for five minutes, just kind of reading up about a few things. And yeah. Do you believe Bigfoot's real? Yeah, I think he plays in the NBA. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Did you have you ever because like there's this there's this this uh, thing in conspiracy circles where you're either really into like UFOs and aliens or you're into uh, uh, Bigfoot, right? 
And so I don't know, like, may I, do you, do you have a preference between those two? If you're asking me, I'm totally into the aliens and UFOs part of uh, conspiracy theories. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and I think that's definitely the more popular one. Did you, have you ever listened to Bigfoot stories or anything? Cause I, cause I think Bigfoot is kind of related to the missing 411 stuff in a lot of ways. Right. Yes. yes I do know that he kind of, uh, David Politis did touch that a whole lot, but he didn't want to because he knows that it would automatically, um, make discredit. people like not discredit him, uh, because people are like, Oh, Bigfoot and everything. But yeah, I mean, Come on, we don't even know what's in our oceans. We don't know. We still haven't cataloged all the animals in our oceans. I'm pretty sure we haven't cataloged every <laughs> single animal that's in our national parks that are in these large, untouched areas of land. But what about, I mean, what about the idea that, like, whatever is doing this? Because there is, like, this inter interdimensional phased, you know, uh, being theory about what's going on with the missing 411 stuff. But, like somebody that that isn't like doesn't follow this stuff might assume that it's like well what does bigfoot have to do with missing people and but it's all kind of related right like there's this idea that bigfoot is like might be an interdimensional creature and that you know that creature is stealing people away somehow by phasing or whatever true and also i mean there's people who believe that aliens are actually interdimensional travelers and not just travelers from another planet or time so, travelers, like, some people. Yeah, time travelers or interdimensional travelers. Yeah. What about the idea that they're angels and demons? <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, you know, I've, I've always, I do believe there's angels and demons, but it's not like what they show on TV where like someone dies and like, oh, I'm dead. And, okay, now I'm an angel. Now I'm going to go and help out, you know, people on earth who are having issues, you know, and I get a, I get a weekly television show about me, like, that's not the way it works. Like angels are actually being <laughs> created by gods. They're not actually supposed to be us after we die kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I always kind of, I used to always get kicked out of that. <laughs> what, what, uh, which, which one? What? No, I always get a kick out of that. How they always show angels. Like after we die, oh. we become angels and we're going around like helping people out on earth or something. Yeah. It's kind of comical. Um, yeah. The, the there's uh, I, there was a theory I don't know where I heard this or if I heard it or it's just something that came to mind, but uh, I think I did hear it somewhere. It sounds like something Robert Anton Wilson would say, but uh, it was that uh, aliens are actually like bots of the of the Matrix, like you know how like we have bots that go and do like silent functions on our computer. Well, what if like aliens are like bots of the Matrix that we're living in? That actually be an interesting theory because I mean you think about them they're basically bots pretty much act like you know AI I mean they pretty much learn from their environment they interact with their environment that could be the same thing um, and when you mentioned that I mean I'm not sure do y'all remember I remember when the movie The Matrix came out they had that uh, little um, I forgot what it was called but it was like um it was like a like an animated like um, anthology series yeah I remember I that yeah. And there was that one episode where, like, they go to a haunted house, but really it was like it was a glitch house in the Matrix. But all the glitches made it seem like it was haunted, but really was it was just a glitch. So that's kind of interesting too. It kind of fits the same the same profile. Yeah, like maybe yeah. all these maybe all these ghosts are just glitches in the Matrix. Have you ever seen those videos on on YouTube where it's got like glitches in the Matrix and like there'll be like a dog twitching, like if it was like a screen twitching and shit like that? Yeah. yeah. That's nuts, dude. The sh I mean, I, I don't think that it does. I don't know. Maybe we're old and we can't see it, but it doesn't seem like CGI to me. Yeah. Well, I've always felt that, you know, interdimensional demonic beings like probably mess with children more because children aren't going to be believed. Like if I go and say, hey, I saw a little man, you know, go into the wall and, you know, do this and that. People are like, oh, it's just your imagination. Now go away. I'm watching my TV show or something. Children yeah. aren't going to be believed. So they can always mess with children. I know it sounds terrible, but, you know. Well, they are that's... more vulnerable, yeah. Um, so, uh, so well, I mean, what kind of movies are you into, man? Are, are they along the same lines, like uh, conspiracy theory, mystery? or It's been a while since we've discussed film. So right now, my movie tastes are pretty uh, boring now, I guess, compared to the way when I was younger. I mean, you know, the Marvel... What were they like when you were younger? Well, I liked everything. As you know, I liked everything. And I would watch 
you know, obviously science fiction has always been my favorite uh, subject for movies, though. That's always been my favorite. Or anything with a cult following, like, you know, Big Trouble in Little China. Um, actually, based on what we're talking about right now, one of my favorite movies of all time is Prince of Darkness by John Carpenter. Ooh. And that is like, a totally awesome movie. Have y'all seen it? Man, it was a long time ago. Oh, I, man. I, I know John Carpenter because, uh, like, I'm a big synthwave fan. Synthwave is a... Uh, uh, yeah, he futurist. does all the music. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does a lot of stuff. For I saw person. him live, actually, at Day for Night. It was like 2012 or thir- 12 or 13. I saw him live. He was actually performing live, and they would show like the scenes from the movies he was performing. It was fucking sick. That'd be awesome, actually. Yeah. But yeah. Very... Like, and Joel, have you seen Prince of Darkness? You know, it sounds familiar. I'm trying to remember. Was it kind of like a like a Dracula thing? No, basically it's um it's kind of complicated and truthfully like when I first saw it, I was not even that young. I was probably in middle school and even then like I didn't understand a lot of it. But it's pretty much the perfect marriage of religion and science to make a horror movie. Um basically what it is is that a priest dies at the beginning of the movie and he left some kind of key with him. They open the key, they use the key, they open up, and they have, like, this little, like, jar. I'm not sure if it was a jar or some kind of, like, vase full of stuff. And they say that... It was, like, that, slime, yeah. They say that's the devil. And so mm-hmm. what happened was that the priest that actually finds it, he goes to local college, gets a whole bunch of graduate students, and their job is to scientifically prove that that's the devil. And it's just amazing. Now, of course, some of it kind of de- devolves into, like, the usual, you know, slasher kind of you know, thing, but I mean, it still stays very high concept and probably the most awesome, most um, mysterious part of the movie is when people fall asleep, they get these dreams, but they're not really dreams. They're actually yes. messages from the future. And it's actually pretty awesome because you have to actually turn up the volume to see what they're saying. But it's like saying like, this is not a dream. There's not a dream. We're using your brain's neural interface to send you a vision from the future. You're getting this message to uh, prevent a future event from happening. But you never get the full message. All you see is like the camera moving towards a church and you see like this little hooded figure in the shadows of a church looking very evil and menacing, but you never get the full message. And it's like, what's going on? And yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just like, it's probably one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Like I know people it's, say Exorcist, you know, Rosemary's Baby. This is my personal favorite horror movie of all time. Man, that's a real, I got I man, I have the VHS somewhere. I need to dig it up and watch it again. That's, that is a good carpenter. Yeah. I have, I I, dude, I can't believe I've, I've never heard of this. I'm listening to you describe well, that's, it about dude, how the messages. That's, out of all the Carpenter movies, that's like, that's like a deep cut. That's one that it's not very popular. You know, it's yeah. not, it's not a big one. It's not Christine or you know, They Live. It's one of the ones. I don't think it did probably very well in theaters. Probably had a limited release. But yeah, it's pretty. And actually, Joe, you like said wave. Like, trust me. After you get off this, you go to YouTube or wherever you listen to music. Just uh, listen to the soundtrack and listen to first the first track, and like you'll totally get into it. Like as soon as you hear that, you're gonna be like. And, and the funny thing is, I remember when I was uh, actually deployed in 2004. I actually uh, had a copy sent to me. I actually got a DVD copy, and I got it. And then one of my friends was like, "Hey, you got any scary movies or something?" Because we all have portable, portable DVD players. And I was like, yeah, here, here's uh, Prince of Darkness. Watch this. This is oh, a good okay. one. And he puts it on. And like the first notes when it's like, dun, 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 he's like, oh, man, we're going to make me watch this, man. I'm not going to be able to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> and, like, and, and But the soundtrack that you were talking about, that is Prince of Darkness? Yes. Yeah, that is an awesome soundtrack, too. I think it's actually one of his best as well. Uh, yeah, he does the, the, the soundtracks, we should say, too, right? He does yeah. pretty much all the music for all his movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. I I only just discovered uh, John Carpenter like through, like I said, through music. Um, what about? So you said that that uh, that was your favorite horror movie or whatever. Like, uh, and every but you mentioned a couple of others. You mentioned Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, maybe. Um, but like, as far as like the classics, you know, the Boomer generation of horror movies. Like, what what's your top three? I mean, it probably would be number one, The Exorcist still. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember watching it. I watched both versions. And I actually remember when they released the um, 
What do you mean I'm both not- versions? There's there's one. It's like yeah. they're adding extra scenes where like um, the demon girl. I can't remember her name. She's yeah. like walking around right. like backwards, and it's yeah. oh, but that was I thought that was just like a missing scene. No, that was actually several uh, things that got added to it. And they also added a little bit more strobing effects. And they added the demon's uh, face to some more scenes. But that version they released in theaters. Because I saw the original version on TV when I was much younger. But when that version got released, we actually went to the movie theater to go watch it. And the funny thing, too, is I remember that scene with Reagan doing a little backwards crab walk. The whole audience and I just started screaming out loud. <laughs> and she jumped out of her seats. And truthfully, even though I've seen a couple of horror movies in theaters... That's probably the biggest reaction I think ever I ever got in any movie theater from people around me. What year did The Exorcist come out? I think it was seventy three. I'll fact check. Seventy, uh, right on, dude. Yeah, seventy. Uh, seventy three. Right on. Hey, you better drink. <laughs> you better drink something, boy. Dude, I did not say Joe Rogan. Adam you just we, did. You just did now. <laughs> Adam. Adam. Adam Wait, you have to take a shot on this drive. I had it ready. Look, I had it fucking ready. I had it ready. So what's, what I mean? You got to take a shot. What, what's Joe Rogan doing? That's two shots now. Anytime you say Joe Rogan, you yeah. have to take a shot of whatever you're drinking. I guess, wow. that, bring, I guess that brings you into the party that I did. <laughs> I don't drink, so I'll just sip some water. Yeah, I'm drinking watermelon sweet tea, so jokes hey. on you. <laughs> So does that mean I have to take three shots? Oh, well, okay. Hala, this guy. So, I mean, um, so horror and sci-fi is your, I guess, your bread and butter. But um, are you, like, into Scorsese, Goodfellas, like, Casino, anything like that? Like, gangster movies? Yeah, I do like uh, those movies. But the funny thing is, it's not really in the gangster genre. But my favorite movie of his is probably Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, man. Oh. That fucking movie. Holy shit. I saw that movie four times in the theaters. Oh my god, that I still movie can't, is really good. I, I still cannot stop watching Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah, try- you, you can just start if it's on. You'll just start watching it. Like you, like yeah, I'm not gonna change the channel. That's Wherever like, it's at the, in the movie. Being the, too. being the tech nerd that I am, I really liked uh, Big Short a lot more though. That was interesting. Yeah, and I did like the little uh, cutaways they would do in the middle of the movie, just explain something. I, Dude, actually- I like Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez came out of that movie. Jesus. Never and fails. It was, like a, it was like a nerd movie. It had like financial like uh, uh, verbology and it was just very complicated. And it had like these like common, you know, uh, perceived common people like Selena Gomez and uh, Anthony Bush. What's his name? The guy, the chef, Anthony something, the one that committed suicide. Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, Anthony Bourdain. Bourdain. Yeah, he came right. out, I think. Yeah, that dude. So I mean, it was brilliant. That was a brilliant movie. Yeah, and then probably after that's probably Goodfellas, and then probably Casino will be my third out of his. Did I thought you... the art was pretty good too, oh, but I was gonna ask you. I, yeah, I kind of I kind of couldn't buy. Uh, you know, I mean, I know he's a great actor, but Robert Nero playing like a twenty year old version of him, <laughs> I kind of couldn't buy it, especially when he fought that guy and he kind of had that old man stance i was like oh yeah, yeah okay because they cgi'd their faces to look younger but you still you can't change your mannerisms of being a young man from being a 70 something year old or 80 i think de niro is almost 80 or he might yeah. be 80 pacino is a little older than him too but yeah that movie i i was excited to see it because joe pesci came back because joe yeah. pesci hadn't done a film in god knows how long and it they looks finally so old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he, yeah, he, he had mob ties from like Jersey because he was like the Jersey Boys. He was a part of them getting signed, and he was like a singer, and he released a bunch of music while movies were coming out. And uh, that's always what he wanted to be. But if he hadn't become an actor, they said he would have been a mob guy. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Although I do know that although we got Joe Pesci in that movie, we didn't get classic Joe Pesci kind of acting. You know, the whole neurotic always wanting to fight somebody always uh very angry but would just say funny stuff all the time yeah that scene Found that you? scene where he was like vinny vinny i got your fucking head in a vice i care for a <laughs> casino <laughs> casino yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah i was like when i when i watched that i was like what the fuck like this movie just took it to the next level dude <laughs> oh and spoiler alert if you, well fuck that spoiler alert if you haven't yeah, seen casino yeah. Yeah, the I way that him and his yeah. brother get killed at the end of casino jesus christ they like mm-hmm. 
If you watch, though, I saw uh, the commentary on it. The One of the bats you can see when they're beating them to death, one of the bats you can see, it's like a rubber bat. It's like bouncing whenever they're hitting his body. But, man, oh. that movie is <laughs> rough, dude. Yeah, that and did, doesn't Al Pacino get turned into a bloody pulp? Like, literally a bloody pulp at the end of that movie? Was it Al Pacino? No, or, Al Pacino wasn't in that one. It was Joe yeah. Pesci. Joe, Joe Pesci. Pesci, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah, Casino, but yeah, Irishman, it was very long, but man, I watched the whole thing. I, I haven't watched it since, but it was good. It was worth the watch. They could have yeah. they could have trimmed a lot of the fat on that movie, but you know, it's oh, Scorsese. Man. I I thought it was really long. Yeah. But I think we actually watched it over three days. It was like watching a series for us. It was like I binging did, a series. I did the whole thing. It was like around Christmas time, I think, because I watched it like a couple days after it after it they released it on Netflix. And when my son crashed out for the night, I just watched the whole thing. I was like, holy shit. I felt like I was drunk. It was crazy. <clears throat> yeah, man. So, so uh, what was the other one? It was uh, freaking uh, Casino. Goodfellas. Goodfellas. And uh, yeah, so I, and I think we, we, we covered all three, right? Because the first one. What about could... King of Comedy? Have you seen King of Comedy? That's one I haven't seen. That's a good one, man. De Niro. Yeah. It's a. It's pretty much a Scorsese movie. Um, he goes on, on and takes Jerry Lewis like hostage because he wants to become famous, but he's kind of like a shitty stand-up comedian. Huh. It's been years since I've seen it, but it's a good movie. It's surprising Jerry Lewis did it a Scorsese movie, but it's a good one. <clears throat> what about uh? What about uh? Didn't you have aspirations of being a, a like a film writer, Adam? Yeah, yeah, I did a long time ago, back in you, my uh, aspirational days. <laughs> you, you never know, before, revisited that. We were we were that uh, generation that was told we could do whatever we wanted to do right. and not be like not be I like sad. Well, that was narrated beautifully in Fight Club to keep it on film. Yeah, that, but I mean, I would go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that concept that we were told that we, we, you know, growing up that all you have to do is work, work hard and you can, you know, do anything you want, you know? Yeah. Although, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know. You were reserved for, for most of your time, man, weren't you? Yeah, the whole time. I mean, I just considered my deployments to be um, active duty because, I mean, you might as well was active duty because I got all the benefits and everything and I had to wear a uniform every day and i had to salute officers and all that yeah so i mean we we at least saw the world to some degree anyway i'm uh, also just on the middle east you know <laughs> <laughs> well you know i mean you got yeah. cultured yeah um so so yeah i mean you never revisited becoming a like a film writer or or, or write your own stuff for your own pleasure so I've actually thought of actually doing that. Um, I actually just wrote an article, uh, and I might actually, it's not really like, you know, writing like for film or something like that, but I wrote an article for this website called Ringside Report. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually run by this guy who used to be in the Navy. He started off as um, kind of writing about boxing and everything, but then he just says, hey, if you want to write for me, just, you know, send me something. And if I like it, I'll put it up there. So I sent him an article, and I'm thinking of probably writing him uh a few more articles. And it's kind of funny you said debut film critic. What I actually wrote about, I didn't actually write a critique of uh, film. I actually wrote a critique of a uh, Twilight Zone episode, a new Twilight Zone episode, the one that's made by Jordan Peele that oh. kind of had what's going on. Uh, have you all seen the episode Replay? I haven't seen any of the new Twilight Zone stuff. I saw some of the Twilight Zone stuff, but not enough to know him by name or whatever. Okay. So interesting, it actually has to do with Black Lives Matter, and it just has to do with this kid that's being dropped off at college by the mom. And, you know, no matter what happens, I mean, obviously, you know, it's about black. I did life. see this episode. Yeah. And there was like a cop following him or something. Yeah. And then mom had the, had the video recorder. And every time she would press rewind, she would rewind to prevent what happened. But no matter what she did, like she couldn't prevent this incident between her son and the cop where he would end up being arrested or worse shot or anything like that. But she eventually, well, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't spoil it. I don't know. But eventually, the the situation is resolved, as as does happen in stories. Yeah. Well, we could say that situation resolved, but you know, not the main the main issue. Right. But you know, I we just recommend the audience if you have access to it, watch it. 
Yeah. I, what, do you remember the name of that episode? You replay. Replay, replay, yeah. That was good. And that's on Netflix, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to check it out then. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, on, it's on CBS All Access. Oh, it was. You're right. I do have CBS All Access. But I, I have CBS All Access because of uh, Star Trek and SEAL Team. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, I got a. I we watched. We got to watch Picard, uh, which wasn't as you know good as I thought it could be. It ended up. It, the ending was pretty good, but it started off kind of slow. And then uh, actually, Star Trek Lower Decks is actually pretty good. Uh, that's a that's a recommend for me. I know a lot of people don't like the whole comedy part, but I mean, it's just it's kind of like a little bit like maybe a little sillier Orville. I'm not sure if y'all seen the Orville. No, I what? Well, oh yeah, yeah. It's kind of like slapstick by what is it? What, Jonas Hill or something? Yeah, the guy. It's part of. The, it's uh, one of the guys who worked on Rick and Morty. Yeah, I, I thought like to to go like a uh, uh, deep cut into uh, Star Trek real quick. I thought Red Shirt Diaries was really good. Did, have you guys seen that mini series on YouTube called Red Shirt Diaries? No. Oh, but I can imagine what's about. So you're saying red shirts, <laughs> right? Yeah. So everybody like that's in the Star Trek knows that the red shirts who are like engineering and security, like mm -hmm. uh, they always end up being the ones that die because they're like the the yeah. lowly security, yeah. you know, officer. <laughs> so they're the ones like sent out to deal with the shit, you know, and like Kirk comes in at the end like a hero. Uh, so anyway, it's 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 just a, like a, uh, you know how they, they they all need to take journals like journal entries. So it's yeah. the the journal the official journal entry video journal entry of one of the security ensigns, female security ensigns on the Enterprise during the time of Kirk during TOS, <laughs> and so but it's filmed like today. And so the, the, uh, you know, the, the video is up to date, but she's, she's like, you know, cute, like short haired girl in, in that <laughs> era of Star Trek uniform. Every time you have to say she was cute. <laughs> <laughs> like Selena Gomez. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop those comments from, I'll, I'll, I'll always do that, dude. I'm not, I'm not going to let. I just think it's funny. <laughs> It's like this guy's got a this guy's got a little uh, obsession with uh who's it Elsa from Frozen? Elsa. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're going to start a list. So like I'm in love with Elsa, <laughs> Selena Gomez and now uh what's her name? I don't know. Megan the... What's her name? The Stallion? No, oh yeah, Megan the Stallion and then yeah, uh, Red the, the Red Shirt Diaries girl. <laughs> anyway, One of these so... not like the other. <laughs> One of these doesn't look like a little girl. Oh, Joel, oh, you're, you're fucked up, dude. Not like, no, that. We... not like that. Not like that. Not like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn, oh, dude. Call, called out by the social worker. Yeah. Uh, you're a fucking pervert, Joel. That's what he's saying. <laughs> dude, we, no, we, oh, dude, we Just established, kidding. we established last time that Elsa was obviously a grown woman in Frozen. <laughs> so, hey, Joel, man, but the funny thing is, I remember, like, you know, like, I do remember your type, you know, from high school and everything. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, uh, so uh, let's see. Where are we going to go from here? Where do you guys want to go? So actually, can I tell my uh, pop and go story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we want to pop talk and go. Dancing. So hold, Sorry, on, hold on. Real quick. Real quick, Adam. So last last time we we're talking about VHS, Raymond, you mentioned that your you and your brother had bought out video stores back in the day, and I think the audio cut out on your side when I mentioned this because I know bef earlier in that podcast you mentioned that you uh, had grown up around the Jeff area, and I had asked you if you had ever been to Pop and Go Video, which was kind of like uh, like a ghetto Hollywood video. I I've never been to it, but I know what Pop and Go is. Okay, right on. Well, I had, I had mentioned it, and I think the, my audio had cut out at that point. So Adam had heard my audio, and he got excited about uh, <laughs> Pop and Go. And, and so, Adam, you, you, you said that you had this burning issue that you wanted to discuss with us. In fact, that's why I brought you on, because you were like, I got to tell my Pop and Go video story. So here we are, man. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't screw it up. All right, so uh, when I was a little kid growing up, this was around the third or fourth grade, uh, probably up to fifth grade time frame. Um, every Friday, of course, it was TGIF, right? TGIF, we'd order a pizza, we'd watch TGIF. 
And a little bit later on, dad would be like, hey, son, let's go uh, rent videos. Like, all right, dad, get in the car, start driving. And it was literally like a blockbuster, like five minutes away from our house. Five minutes. And every single Friday, we'd pass this blockbuster, keep driving, drive for about 30 minutes. I have no idea why we drove 30 minutes to pop and go, get to pop and go. Dad's like, here, son, go ahead and rent whatever you want. So, of course, me being a kid, like I go straight to the kids section. I rent movies. You know, one of my favorite movies I always rent was A Black Hole. You know, and so I'd read these movies. I'd find something. And my dad would come back out. He'd be like, okay, son, I got the movie I wanted. You got the movie you wanted? Like, yeah, sure. And he had his movie already in like in a brown paper bag. And they'd be like, okay. So I go to the, I go to the, you know, the front desk, you know, dad would pay for my movie. I'd be all excited. I walk to the car, drive 30 minutes back or however long it was to, you know, back to the house. And then my dad would just disappear in his room and that was it. And just long, so for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why dad drove the extra 30 minutes to go to this video store when it was blockbuster right down the road. Yeah, but yeah. to be honest, though, Pop and Go was a lot more fun because, like I said, it had a Hollywood video. So it wasn't like well lit. It was a little bit darker. People were running around, popcorn all over the floor. It felt more like a party at that area. But yeah, I remember just wondering, why did why does my dad go all the way to this random video store, not the Blockbuster? Oh, well, I don't care. I got my movie. I'm just going to watch it. Right. Yeah, you were distracted. Did uh, you ever go as you were when you were older? Yeah, I, I figured out what it was when I was older. I think they had a really good, like, Spanish language movie. I think that's what my dad was renting. I can't be sure, though. I think he rented these Spanish language movies that they really didn't have a blockbuster. That's the only thing I could think that blockbuster didn't sell. Yeah. I don't know of anything else. I mean, yeah, I think that's all they really didn't have, right? Well, the name to me, the name to me, because I, you know, I saw it when I was probably, like, in my mid-teens. And I always thought, I was like, is that? Is that a porno place? That's what I always thought, just because of the name. And then I remember we went in, and I was like, oh, it's like a video store. But, of course, it was like one of the old school video stores where they had, like, the curtained off section. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, I figured out later on, but I just get a kick out of that because as a kid, you didn't really understand. Like, yeah. you know, we didn't know that Blockbuster didn't sell that kind of stuff, but other places would. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, did, I didn't have the presence of mind. To think, oh, this is uh, this is associated with with pornography. I, mean, I don't know, but I, I did. Do you remember the little door that you would pop open and drop the 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 cassette tape in? Yeah, like you you had to return that, right? Yeah. And and I think the slang of the day was like, I'm gonna like, oh, you can just pop it in or something like that. I don't know. It was like pop in the VCR or the VHS into the into the player, pop it in, pop it out, blah blah blah. Like I don't know, but maybe that was a cover story. I don't know. <laughs> well, like I said, I didn't know about it, so I was like 16, 15. So you know, yeah. God knows where my mind was. The funny thing is, my dad being Mexican, he would just call it papingo. Let's go to papingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Papingo. So I was like, okay, cool. Like Papingo. Papingo, dude. That's dude, that's the new name, dude. It sucks <laughs> that it's not around. I wish there was like a like a VHS slash vinyl slash laser disc slash cassette tape, you know, store slash rental place. That would be badass. You have to go I mean, to Austin have, for that. Yeah. Well, even Austin, the, those are dying off. Video. And, yeah, I love video. Yeah, but hasn't it closed off already? No, they had two. They had two uh, locations, and one of them still around. Oh, okay. I yeah. wonder if it survived COVID. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Hmm. I, I did. Yeah, I didn't know that those still even existed. I mean, we have half price books, but that's not the same. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Well, because you know, I live in San Marcos, and for the longest time we had Hastings. Um, but that also closed. That didn't last. But it kind of had not the exact same thing you're talking about, Joel. But kind of like they had music, they had movies, they had books, and they had software. So it's kind of like it was a great place to browse. You know, just to kind of you know go there for a little bit and just look around. Oh, they had toys too, and and comics. After a while, they put in comics, but then they kind of died Hastings. off. Hastings was man. I remember when the the one in San Marcos you were telling me or you were talking about. It's the one that's in the shopping center for the new uh, Alamo Draft House. Yeah. I remember I went to it because I didn't know they were closing down. I just was working out there and I stopped there and they were like um, close, like closing down sale, whatever. And I was like, oh, that sucks. I went in there and I bought like Seinfeld figurines. I bought like 20 DVDs, Blu-rays, and they were all like a buck. And I remember the lady, I had a stack of them and she was like, you can just have these. She didn't want to like input the the prices. I was like, all right. So I was, yeah, that place is dope. <laughs> 
I used to always stop yeah. there when I'd travel for work. Yeah, now it's a cons. Yeah. <laughs> All corporate and everything. <sighs> cons is a, cons is kind of like an old school store too. That's like I'm surprised they're still around. Uh what other uh so so what so we, we discussed what like horror and uh what was the other genre with Goodfellas, like crime, true crime, stuff like that. What's your yeah. what's your favorite genre? Uh probably you know what actually I think most of the time it's horror. It kind of changes, but right now since we're in October, this is actually my favorite time of the year. This is when everybody puts out horror stuff. I do think horror is like my favorite thing, just because. I mean, I kind of love to be scared, but I'm also kind of picky in my horror. I don't like horror where it's like, oh, and this guy's running around with a knife, and you know, like where the horror is all like the usual, oh, with the music's quiet, and then like a cat jumps out, and the music goes dun, and people are like, oh my god, that's so scary. Like that's not really scary to me. I'd like more of a of uh like atmosphere and you know mood do you like hereditary so i actually haven't seen that i've Ooh. actually been watch it i think that's something i would probably like but what's, I hered- what's hereditary about raymond um so hereditary is the ending i had to kind of read about the movie to understand exactly what happened with the ending but it's pretty much a story about a lady loses her mom and I don't want to give it away, but it's pretty much about a lady losing her mom and another family member. And she figures out how to um, talk to the dead by like lighting a candle, doing a. Um, what is it called? A um, seance. Yeah, a seance. So she kind of when she does the seance, she kind of opens doors and there's a it, it's very like. The, the guy who directed it, he's like European dude and pretty much it's kind of like jump scares, but it gets violent, like out of nowhere, like because the movie's very quiet and then there's one death that they show and it's very violent. And then but then they don't show anything for a long time. And then she does the seance at this person's house and pretty much she opens the doors and at the ending, everything just unravels. You see like people like. You see somebody like crawling on the walls, but they don't really show it. It's just kind of like the person doesn't see it, but you can see it vaguely. And then it moves whenever the person turns around. It's a my wife and I watched it uh, Friday night. Holy shit, man. It was it was a good, scary movie. It was a a horror movie, I should say. My Mexican came out. But yeah, (laughs) it's good, man. Hereditary is good. And then the same director, he also did. Um. Another movie which wasn't that good, but it was, um, what is it called? Selena Gomez. It's funny you say that. She actually, <laughs> she actually tried to buy like the flower suit from it. Oh, what's the name of it? It's called. Um, uh, uh, Midsummer. That one. It's okay. Sure. It's yeah. it's real slow, but when it gets violent, it's just weird. It's almost like culty. They go to like Sweden. It's weird. Were you gonna say something about Midsummer, Adam? No, I I I heard about it. I haven't seen it either. So Dan, it's stuff I need to actually put on my to do to to watch pile to do pile <laughs> to watch pile. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed, man. I thought you were gonna be like on top of every single thing that came out. <laughs> I'm not I'm not as into movies as I used to be when I was younger. Um, but actually, what I like right now is we we binge a lot of shows. Uh, so that's another thing, especially like a lot of horror shows. Did you see uh, Ratchet? Yeah. No, I haven't seen it, but uh, I know the last horror show we finished. We're actually gonna. We actually just started the Haunting of Bly Manor uh, this weekend. We went through one episode. We're probably gonna watch uh, probably another one as soon as we're done here. Um, but yeah, we're, we uh, a good one that we actually saw was a uh, Juon Origins that came out on Netflix uh, a few months ago. But yeah, that was actually pretty good. We just watched it a couple of weeks ago. What's it it's called? Like Juon Origins. Juon, spell that. J U O N, J U Juan Origins. Okay, yeah, it, you know about the Grudge, right? The Grudge, probably. Yeah, yeah, the ghost story. You know, it, it actually started in Japan as Juan. Yeah, the original movie. Like, yeah, yeah, it's actually like the the prequel to all of that, like what happened in the house and what um, you know started the whole Grudge universe. Um, and one thing I like about it is actually they do a good job of capturing the '80s. Like you watch the show and you're like. Wait, would this show film in the 80s? Because it really looks like the 80s. 
I thought I thought Stranger Things did a half decent job. Was it better than Stranger Things? It was probably equal, I would say. But it's kind of it's different because Stranger Things is more of a rural setting. You know, you really don't get that city feel until like the third season with the mall. But you know, Juwan Origins kind of has like the Tokyo setting for you know the eighties thing, and kind of like what you saw a lot of like the eighties, like the way that people dressed and everything, and you know the technology and using a lot of cassette players and all that. Yeah, no, I, we, oh, I thought, uh, have you have you guys seen Maniac? I, Brayman, I think I gave you, I like the new haircut, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Got a little rat uh, tail. <laughs> oh, taking it back. <laughs> um, I, 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 did you guys see Maniac with uh, Jonah, Jonah, what's his name? I think we talked about Jonah it. Jonah Hill? Day. Yeah, maybe Jonah Hill. <laughs> Him and no. Emma Stone? And Emma Stone, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that show. I, I, seen saw, I think I saw the first part of an episode, but I fell asleep. But it's almost Dude, like... Uh, there's this one episode where Ghetto Boys comes out because oh, he's having sad. a dream and he's like a, like a thug, like a gangster thug. In this, like, he's a normal nerdy guy, but in this dream, he's like <laughs> a gangster. Like, it was, it was like, uh, like casino type stuff, right? He was like a gangster and uh he was like a family gangster and he's like wait he's like he's spying on somebody like his dad or some some traitor to the family and he's waiting in his badass like hoopty out front and he's bumping ghetto boys and uh it was uh my mind is playing tricks on me because he yeah. was dreaming oh dude it's just that whole movie is like mm, i mean the, it's a limited series but like I, that's like my favorite thing on netflix like i want to i want to buy a dvd copy and like enshrine it I need to see that because I, I saw it when it first or I saw I remember when it first came out because they just really I think it was just one season. It was like a little mini series they dropped on Netflix, right? Yeah. 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 It was, a, And I hate that, that it's like those limited series where it's like you want it to go on forever because you yeah. love it so much. <laughs> and there's only ever going to be one season. Yeah. Did, did y'all see Don't Fuck With Cats, that Netflix documentary? I've heard about it. I, I don't really like seeing, you know stuff to animals so i kind of oh they don't they don't show anything it that's not the main part so what the documentary is about is there's this guy they don't really show it but he like does he like kills cats like he puts them in like a suction bag and like takes all their oxygen but all these people online like they made a facebook community where they find out where he is and all these things but it turns out like this person is involved in an actual murder of a person mm. and it but all because of these Facebook people that they were like, oh, he's abusing cats. We love cats. And but they were pretty much like investigating and giving their information to the FBI. But the guy, he's like trying to be a celebrity. He's very. Uh, he's different. He's like really obsessed with movies. And if you the documentary will blow your mind, don't don't get caught up with, you know, him just killing cats. That's only a little bit of it. It's only like part of the beginning. It's really it's a crazy documentary. Yeah, and I know the main point was how they brought him down and everything, but I guess just getting back. But yeah, I'll definitely put on my to to watch pile. I know I saw the what, preview. What's it called again? Don't fuck with cats. Don't fuck with cats. Right. Actually, since I know y'all y'all asked me about movies and genres stuff like that, uh, one thing that one movie I should probably tell you about, and that also to your listeners, it's a movie y'all should definitely watch. Um, have you ever heard of a movie called Fish Story? No, you probably no. haven't. Because it really didn't get a wide release in the United States. Uh, it's actually a Japanese movie. Um, now, when I first saw it, I actually saw it through a torrent. Um, I, they did have a DVD release. It might still be out there. but Is it a short? Right now. Huh? Is it a short? No, it's actually a full movie. Oh. Um, the only way to watch it probably be on DVD right now. I don't think it's available to stream or anything like that. But it's actually like probably one of my favorite four movies of all time. I can't really, you know how like sometimes you talk about the movie and you say no spoilers, but truthfully, you could probably spoil a little bit and you would probably still enjoy the movie. But like this movie, you definitely can't spoil too much. But I spoil too much, that'll take all the fun. But I can tell you about the movie. It starts off in 2012 and there's a comet head towards Earth and it's basically going to wipe out all life and everything. And like there's this guy like going through the streets of Tokyo, like the whole city is like being evacuated. Everybody's like in hiding because this comet's like hours away from striking Earth. And he's walking down the street and he's just like looking at everything. And he sees there's still a record store open. He's like, hey, why is there a record store open? You know, 
with hours till the world ends. So it goes in there and the guy running, the clerk is talking to this guy and he says, the earth's not going to come to an end because of this song called Fish Story. And he's like, why? <laughs> oh, like, I'm, why yeah, I'm reading the synopsis. It's about like a punk band or something, right? Their song. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's not going to have, and you, and when you watch it, you're like, what? How's the song going to like stop the comment? But it makes sense when you watch it. And the only thing I tell you about this movie is when you watch the movie, the last 10 minutes, you'll have a smile on your face. That's all I can, you know, say. Like, you know, a lot of movies right now, they're very nihilistic, very like, you know, down, you know, they try to be very like, you know, very depressing and everything. This is probably a movie you'll leave feeling like a million bucks. Like you're going to leave the movie and be like, okay, I'm, I totally have a smile on my face. This is awesome. I love it. I don't want to watch anything else today. Let's go sleep or something. Damn. That, that I'm going to fucking good. buy that then. <laughs> it's called Fish Story. You know, yeah. you know what movie did that for me? It kind of made me happy. It's, it's kind of like a deep cut or it, it was like a film festival type thing with uh oh shit i can't remember their name it's gonna escape me oh uh safety not guaranteed did you guys ever see that probably not yes i did yes i did you saw that okay so the ending right which is like totally threw me like i wasn't expecting it i already knew what i was expecting towards the end i don't know if you were like that too but when when the ending started happening it was like it was a good two minutes at the end where i just had this huge smile on my face yeah because I mean, like everything, because you the whole time, well, I mean, I guess we don't want to spoil it, but the whole time you're kind of going towards, you know, the not as happy ending. And then you're like, oh, wait, OK, so it's a happy ending. This. All right. Like, I actually like this. It's actually Damn pretty it. cool. Yeah. Two you know, movies and, I got to watch now. Yeah. Safety Not Guaranteed, man. It's uh, that's a beautiful movie to me. La- that kind of made me feel human the way Amelie made me feel human. I don't know if you guys ever saw Amelie, that French film. We did, a long yeah. time ago, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's like soul food right there, man. Yeah, it's, it kind of has that same thing. Like, for instance, you know how, like, in Amelie, like, you know, the whole part where she's finding those torn up pictures and she's trying to, like, figure out what's wrong with this guy and, like, why is he turning up his pictures all the time? And, like, she finally runs into him and then, like, the whole scene happens where, like, you know, you the pictures come back and it forms to his face. And you're like, oh, now you get it. Like, this guy was just taking pictures because he's a technician. Right. He he's a camera technician. It's kind of got the same feeling. We're like, oh, I get it. Like, this makes sense. And it's actually pretty cool. Like, that's yeah. the same thing that happened with Safety Not Guaranteed and with this movie Fish Story. Like, oh, yeah, now I get it. Like, your brain makes that connection. You're like, oh, yeah. Like, like you feel like you've done it. You feel like you've done the legwork yourself in figuring this out. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like that Da Vinci code thing, you know, like you, you felt like you were on a, on a hunt. I I read the book before I saw the movie, but it kind yeah. of gives you that feeling like it was like a hunt. Yeah. I, I remember I saw the, I read the book too, and I was really disappointed in the movie when it came out. Yeah. The movie didn't do it justice. It sounds so cliche to say, but that's just how it is. Like that, that book was even the jacket cover. Did you ever find the secret code on the jacket cover? So, no, actually, I mean, I hate to sound like Gen Z-ish, but, like, I've now <laughs> done all my books. All my books now are digital. Like, I don't really buy books anymore. Yeah, I mostly do audiobooks. Same. So, speaking of Da Vinci Code, let's get back into conspiracy theories. All right. <laughs> do you believe that, uh, I guess it's the whole Wayfair child sex thing? Do you believe that like Tom Hanks and Ellen and all these people are like pedophiles? I don't really believe in all that. Um, I mean, I do believe we do have pedophiles and some of them are really like high positions. And the one thing I always notice is that people always get protected. Like, I don't know why they're being protected, but they're always like, oh, well, they're so talented. We can't like, you know, go after them. Like one person I was surprised and actually very sad to find out was a pedophile was um john crick fallacy the guy who created ren and simphy um you know i'm not sure if y'all know about that right i i think i saw somebody uh, i ignore most of them but um i don't i'm not on facebook anymore but that's when i was i kind of got off but i had seen something it was like a whole article and i was like uh, i just kind of just kept scrolling yeah i mean i don't believe they're like eating children and stuff like that or like you know sacrificing to satan or anything like that but yeah i mean i do believe there's probably pedophiles that 
are, you know, probably positions where they're using their power to prey on, you know, innocent children. But also I think a lot of these conspiracy theories are actually doing anything to actually protect these children. Like it's well, just Yeah. Well Ford Coppola is kind of he's not tied into it, but um have you ever seen that movie Jeepers Creepers? Yes. So Victor oh, yeah. Sa- Victor yeah. Salva, he was the one who directed that. His first film, he actually got put in prison, and he's a registered sex offender because he yeah. filmed him molesting two of the stars of the movie. And the main star of the movie, the movie was called Funhouse, I believe. The main yeah. star of the movie, because the um, the mom, you know, and everything, they found out, they found these tapes and everything. Ford Coppola blacklisted him, so that's the only movie he ever did. And then he came out of prison. And he he did that movie Powder, which was yeah. like critically acclaimed, really good movie, blah, blah, blah. And all these people were protesting the movie, but it's still it didn't really affect that. And then Jeepers Creepers and, you know, he's done, you know, a handful of movies afterwards. But, yeah, he got caught red handed and he only did, I think, a couple years in prison. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, yeah, it's if you start going down that rabbit hole, it's it's nuts. And I, I found out on accident because I was watching uh, I watched powder and I was like, man, this guy, I was like, his movies are kind of, they're different. And then I started reading about him, Victor Salva. And when I read that, I was like, Oh fuck. I was like, I didn't know this. And How, sorry. No, go ahead. You're good. No, I was just going to say powder was weird. Powder was kind of like a phenomenon with John Travolta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, just a story. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. You were talking about uh, Salva. Yeah, no, I just read that about him. And then I was just and this was a while back, dude. This is probably like 2010 because I was just because I always at the time I would just check IMDb on my computer and I was just reading about it on my laptop at the time. And I was just like, oh, my God. And then recently, um, a friend of mine, he like sent me a bunch of links to like Tom Hanks and all these people like, oh, he's like a a Greek citizen now and all this stuff. And I was just reading about that. And I was like, "Ah." it's like, man, this is it's a lot. They're saying that they're affiliated with the Illuminati, like eating children and sacrificing them and all these things. And I was just like, oh, man, just to keep up with all those things sounds (laughs) it's exhausting. So the guy, the guy that brought that brought the the story to like I guess the main news, like they were talking about it nationally. But the guy that I don't know, I remember was named Ben Swan, and he did like the first like uh, serious investigative work into PizzaGate after that dude shot up uh, the that pizza shop, and and he like he talked about the FBI report that i like uh itemizes the symbols that they use to identify and the, he compared it to like these the logos outside these pizza parlors and stuff like that so that got my attention and then uh and then what got my attention even further is that cuz i saw this video like months after it came out and then i went to go do some more research and they mentioned that Ben Swan uh, the guy that did the the investigation actually went missing for like a week or two. And like when he came back, he recant, not recanted it, but he just didn't want to talk about anything. Like he refused to talk about the Pizzagate stuff. And so like he like it was like they got to him, in other words. And then towards the end, uh, well, actually not towards the end, just the other day, I, I turned on, uh, RT, you know, Russia today, the Russian news service, and he's an anchor for RT now, Ben Swan. Oh. So yeah, I thought, I thought that was really weird. And they tend to go for those like Mavericks, but I don't know if Ben Swan has discussed it since then, but yeah, there's like a lot of, uh, crazy stories associated with Pizzagate, but I don't know. I. I I think that there's something to it. I, Adam, you were uh, talking about uh, uh, disappointments regarding to like famous people who have gotten caught up in the pedophilia thing. Uh, Kevin Spacey. I was yeah. really I was really disappointed to see that Kevin Spacey got caught up in all that, especially because I love House of Cards, man. Yeah, and it's kind of like the whole saying like never meet your heroes. Although like you know at the same time like when we say disappointment, I want to make sure we know that like you know what they did was reprehensible. We don't feel bad for him. It's like, right. you know, was, you know, I can't believe they did that, but you know, now like I don't even watch and I know like a lot of people worked in it, but 
now I can't go back and watch Ren and Simpy without like thinking what he did and everything. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And then, you know, I'm not sure if y'all ever saw Ren and Simpy adult adult cartoon party. No, 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 don't, don't watch that. Look, check it out. Y'all. I'm not like a prude. You know, obviously I watch crazy stuff all the time. But that was probably one of the sickest things I've ever seen. And, you know, it's kind of like, like, I'm not a prude or anything, but this is like, beyond. was it even more obvious under that light? Under the light of, way, yeah, it was way more obvious. And, you know, even stuff that he would say, like John Crick policy, you know, now you kind of see like, whoa, like the stuff he said, like, and of course, you know, the nineties, people were more, people were less, you know, cognizant of that, but um, they did show like when he was being interviewed by Howard Stern and I guess he drew some girl, big boob, big, big hips, big butt and everything. And like Howard was like, yeah, he looks, she's got this and that. And then, John Kirk Foss is like, and she's underage too. Like, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. That by disappointed we mean it's absolutely reprehensible. Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, it's you know, it's like, fucked up. You were saying? Oh no, no, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's, and it's not even trying to. It's not even trying to be part of the cancel culture. It's just kind of like what's right and what's wrong. If there's like actual evidence that these things happen and this person's in trouble like you can't just i mean you can you can still go back and watch their movies and stuff but it's in a different light now it's kind of like well like i don't know it's yeah i just remember ren and stimpy when i was younger it was one of the shows that we weren't allowed to watch so we watched it you know when my mom was like gone or you know if we recorded them on tape and watched them later but yeah i didn't even know about him from that early 90s era with respect to those cartoons, the one I, I remember the most is the one with the babies that came out of Nickelodeon. Rugrats. With the oh, Rugrats. Rugrats, yeah. Yeah, Rugrats was cool. I liked Rugrats. That was good. Yeah. And actually, and, I've always been a big fan of Doug. That was my favorite one. Doug, I, I was going like, to say that. Doug funny, man. Yeah. Doug the head, like, right? Yeah. Well, man, I always, bro. I always, I always felt awkward like him. <laughs> Did you guys to... ever see Liquid TV on MTV? Yes. Oh, oh man. Dude, that is the most brilliant piece of animation since or before, you know? Yeah, and actually my favorite thing about that, it totally like blew my mind because I was still a little kid, was an Aeon Flux. Aeon Flux, yes. Aeon Flux. <laughs> She's hot, right? I know that's what you're going to say. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll you know, leave the it there. Is, I think we might have been the last generation, or maybe it's still going on now where like, you know, cartoons are for kids. I mean, granted, I know like you weren't allowed to watch Red and Stimpy, but for the most part, it was like, oh, that's cartoons is for kids. Because I remember uh, back in San Antonio, I lived in San Antonio, there was uh, there was a guy who had a public access channel, uh, public access show. He would just show anime, but he would show like '80s uncut anime with people being ripped in half and like you know people having their heads cut off and like like Ninja fully- Scroll and shit. Yeah, all that stuff. And then all I remember is my dad, like I guess. It came out late at night, and I was up and everything. And my dad's like, "Hey, Adam, they're showing cartoons on Channel 20." And I changed Channel 20, and I'm watching anime with like <laughs> nudity and like people being ripped in half. And I was like eight years old. And my dad didn't care; it was cartoons. He didn't check to see what I was watching. He's like, "Hey, there's cartoons there. Be happy." Yeah, with. I was amazed like some of the shit that was coming out on Liquid TV, and like my mom just didn't like she didn't I, I she watched some of it but it was just weird shit it was weird shit you know and yeah. i think that's where beavis and butthead got their start was on liquid tv and who else dug the head also right yeah no or oh, oh dug the head yeah yeah not dug um, remember the old school uh, cartoon network like johnny not johnny bravo yeah johnny bravo and oh what was that it was like almost a talk show it was like space ghost yeah Space Ghost Coast to Coast, yeah, dude. Man. Yes. Shit was that was dope. crazy shit. You would like interview like actual celebrities. Like, I don't know if it was Tenacious D. In my mind, I want it to be Tenacious D, Jack Black. But yeah, that shit was, that was that, way before its time. I know. That was podcasting before it was podcasting. Yeah. Man. For sure. Damn. So what else? What else are we doing? Oh, I just wanted to ask about that. Uh, that can consp- the that was one thing that that kept getting brought up and for some reason I started researching it and then 
I started researching like um this there was this guy who actually killed himself, but he like did like a two hour live stream. And then I think he like jumped off of a bridge into traffic, but he was like outing. He was like an actor. He was in a only a couple movies, but he had Who outed was it? like. Do you remember his name? Um, I can look it up, but um, he um he outed like Steven Spielberg and all these people, but he also got a restraining order put against him um from Paris Hilton, not Paris Hilton, um, Michael Jackson's daughter, um. And a few other celebrities, like he was threatening to go shoot up her house, and he was like really deep in like coke and all these things. I just remember he was in this movie Fanboys, and he just played like a small part in Fanboys. And then, but all of a sudden, everybody was like taking this interview or this video he put out and like using it like as gold. Like, oh, what he's saying is true. Is like this guy was so unstable. He was so he was on so many drugs and he was just saying it just sounded like he was ranting about just random things. Not to say not to say he wasn't right, but I watched the video. I had to watch it on I think it was Reddit. His name was Isaac Cappy. Isaac hmm. Cappy. Yeah. He died in uh he died like this past year, uh 2019. And I just remember watching his live stream and I was just like, What? And it just a lot of the times he was just saying, like, I can prove it. But um, I can't name names. Just saying things like that. And in my head, it was like, well, this guy, it seems like this guy was partying and just started ranting. But yeah, he was saying like Steven Spielberg, like him and Tom Hanks, they like would get young girls from the movies they did and do God knows what and like sacrifice them and or eat them or whatever it was. And I was just like, uh, I was like, holy shit. That's when I kind of like put the kibosh. I was like, I can't, it's like, I can't do this anymore. It's like, this is too <laughs> deep. Cause the guy who actually makes my shirts, he turned me on to a bunch of them too. And I was just like, oh man, I was like, I, I don't have time for all this shit. Like I'm barely keeping my head above water here. <laughs> well, I know. Uh, have you heard about uh, Corey Feldman and what he's been saying? Oh, I saw part of his documentary. Yeah. He, but dude apparently charlie sheen so there's a thing there's this movie called lucas and Corey Haim yeah. was like the main actor he's like you know the young kid he wants to play football whatever it was like rudy before rudy kind of in the 80s well apparently charlie sheen like raped him on the set of that movie hmm. and when questioned about it um he just said like no it never happened and then he changed the story saying it was consensual but there was probably a number of actors that said that they they heard and they saw it, but they just kind of like, oh, well, you know, it was, you know, it seemed like because they were buddy buddy on the set. But he was underage at the time of them making that movie. And Charlie Sheen was quite a bit older than him. So there was that. And there was another thing that came up on that documentary, but it was, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I think he mentioned that was part of the reason why that Corey had committed suicide or was it suicide or did he have a drug overdose? I forgot. Well, it was a drug overdose. It, well, it was like it was like from years of drug drug use that it like something happened with his heart and his blood. <clears throat> did somebody just have like a jet fly over or something? Yeah, that was weird. It wasn't me. That was weird. No. It's all it's all the conspiracy shit we're talking right now. <laughs> the government's shutting us down. Yeah, dude. They want their pound of flesh. <laughs> um so uh so uh, uh keeping track on on conspiracy theories let's see what else was on that list i sent you guys i never um, got a list actually you that's sent... right i sent it to raymond yeah i got uh, it right here but no check yeah, out isaac, isaac cappy check that like just look up isaac cappy i-s-a-c-k-a-p-p-y just 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 type that in dude it's crazy <laughs> Um, so the list you gave me was um, sock gnomes, Bigfoot, Skinwalker Ranch. I think we got moon all that. Nazis. Moon Nazis. Yeah. What do you think about moon Nazis, Adam? I mean, I think the Nazis probably escaped to South America. I'm not sure if they had the ability to go to the moon. <laughs> you don't think that that story about Admiral Byrd? You heard about speaking about uh, Antarctica Nazis. Like, so Admiral Byrd was sent on an expedition to go and investigate, like, Antarctica. And when he came back, like, he said some really crazy shit. Either he had become schizophrenic, 
and like imagine the whole thing. But I think there were corroborations where he was talking about how like there's an aerial force uh, station in Antarctica and we have nothing on earth that could even touch him. Like, did you hear that statement? No, actually I didn't. You said Admiral Byrd? Admiral Byrd, yeah. His name was Admiral yeah. Byrd and he, he, he went down there. And so like the leading theory is that, you know, like uh, the Nazis took their UFO squadron down there and basically used that technology to set up shop. But, uh, but you know, if they, if they had flying saucers, you'd think they might be able to pull off a moon base as well. Yeah, they probably would. I, I don't know. Uh, anything else on that list, Raymond, besides moon Nazis? Um, flat Earth. We don't have to talk about that, though. Um, moon Nazis. What the hell is sock gnomes? What, what is that? Oh, no, I... <laughs> Was that a joke? I don't. Know. Yeah, yeah, it was a joke. I was basically. I, I, I did that, and there's a lot of things on Etsy for sale. That's all. I saw. Shut the fuck up, really. <laughs> that sounds like, like socks. Socks always come out missing for me, so I don't know. Well, that's, that's why. I that's another it up. thing that I that saw that like apparently all your missing socks. It's like gnomes that come in the middle of the night and take your your left sock. Yeah, huh. yeah. I always thought but, it was cannibal, cannibalism by the other sock. <laughs> you never know but then the other socks would be like fluffier and my socks are always <laughs> thin with holes in them <laughs> and i just keep all my socks black so even if they mismatch I, I try to do that but then you know my suit socks get mixed up and then my my uh my my thong from from hard body strip club ends up in there and <laughs> gets mistaken as a sock on when are they putting it, you back to work i know they've closed down for a while because of covid uh dude i'm doing private work guys if, any, <laughs> if anybody needs any like exotic private dancing what's your only fans uh link just go ahead and no, it's it up just there. it's just twitter I, i'm just a normal <laughs> twitter thought it's uh, at <laughs> at Joel Benavides, J O E L B E N A V I D Z, and uh, if you guys uh, want a, a duo, Adam is willing to volunteer. Yeah, I'm doing. <laughs> Anything for I'm not, a buck? I'm not, a, I'm not as little as I was in high school. Oh, oh, not oh. that way. Not oh. that way. <laughs> He's a grower, not a shower, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was hoping we we're gonna get to this point. Well, anyway, the podcast has been going on for one hour and 27 minutes. Do you guys have anything else you want to cover? Any burning? Oh. What's up, Adam? I think I can think of right now. Yeah. So, nah. so you're, so you're a, a film. So you're a, a, what did you say at the beginning? He was a, a I, oh, a, de a debut film critic, like basically saying this is his first like appearance, but as a, oh, as a, okay. as a film critic. I thought you were a real film critic. I was like, man, send me some yeah. of your, uh, <laughs> no, but for some reason, people actually listen to my opinion for some reason. I don't know what's wrong with these people. But yeah, like at work, people were like, hey, Adam, what did you watch recently? And I was good. Like, ah, well, I watched this movie. And they're like, cool. And then they'll go watch the movie. And they'll be like, yeah, I actually like the movie. So if you actually listen to me at work, it's kind of weird. Do you Have you ever seen any of the old Harmony Korine movies like Gummo or um, Julian Donkey Boy or any of those? Trash I've Humpers? actually never seen that movie. I mean, the, the closest I've ever seen to those kind of movies I know. I don't think he was involved with it. Maybe he was a scriptwriter with that movie Kids. Kids. Yeah, yeah, he well, he wrote the script and he like played like a small part in the movie. But yeah, yeah the script was verbatim. They you uh, Larry Clark used his script. But there's one movie you got to check it out. It's called Gummo. It's it's supposed to be. It's like a no name town, but it's supposed to be like apocalyptic. Yeah, and you pretty much you uh, they they eat and kill cats. Yeah. And there's there's a lot with of the cats again. Yeah, well, it's, I'm just saying it's a movie, <laughs> but it's that. a very it's a real low budget movie. But his movies always leave you kind of leave you leave something like Mr. Lonely is another good one. There's a scene where there's a bunch of nuns um, jumping out of a plane and you would think they're, you know, they're jumping out of a plane parachutes. But no, they're all dead. They all jump out of the. It's like one of the first scenes of the movie. Yeah. And in this other movie, um, Gummo, that I was talking about. There's a scene where there's a guy pretty much like prostituting out his daughter who has Down syndrome. And there's like a lot like all of his movies, they they like cross a certain line. They don't show anything, but there's always like lines that are being crossed in all of his movies, except for, you know, like Spring Breakers. That was more of his Hollywood movie. And yeah, uh, there's Spring Breakers uh, star Selena Gomez. 
Yeah, it does. Oh my god. You would like that movie. She's in a she's in a little bikini the whole time. So I'm surprised you don't have that. <laughs> but uh, dude, yeah. I bought some stuff on eBay having to do with Selena Gomez, but that's for another time. Oh shit, you got a lock of her hair, you sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know that uh I just liked uh, Spring Breakers the most. What bought me, what sold me was Gucci Mane was in it. And I just I just remember him talking about that movie before they released it. And he was saying that he was very high because this is before he went to jail and rehab and all that. Or not rehab, but went to jail and got clean. That he actually fell asleep during a sex scene in that movie. That he's, they had to like, they had to like cut out him snoring because there's, you just, you know, it's not like an actual sex scene, but you just see like a girl on top of him and he's kind of, his head's laid back, but apparently he fell asleep while they were filming that movie or that scene. Speaking of uh, like famous people who like get high and do shit, um, you, are, are, how do you guys feel about Shia LaBeouf? Man. <laughs> I. I just saw I'm, I, the reason I ask is because I just saw a really funny meme about him before we started. I like I like I think he's a good actor. He, um, I haven't seen Peanut Butter Falcon. I bought it. I haven't seen it yet on digital, but um, he's his that movie about his his life. Um, uh-huh. What is it? Uh, Honey Boy. I need to watch it again because it was I seen it. it was it, it was it was good, but it was it they don't explain a lot. It, it I just, only saw the documentary where they were like uh, interviewing him about the movie, or they were talking about like his dad or something. Well, yeah, if if the because the movie like it's about his dad and then him, but he his dad was like an asshole, right? Like yeah, like, like a typical a, asshole dad. A rodeo. He was like old rodeo clown, and he was like very hard on him, and he like his Shia LaBeouf as a kid was trying to tell his dad, like, be fucking normal. Like, can you be my dad? You don't need to be a prick to me. And then the movie ends with not, cause it's like taking place when Shia LaBeouf is like in rehab older after getting into trouble. And then he just keeps flashing back to his childhood. And his dad was like a, a really shitty dad. He was like pretty much only there because his son wanted him to be there because he was paying him but they were like living in a shitty hotel and when Shia LaBeouf was a kid he was having to steal food from the set just to eat and it was weird but it was it was a super indie movie I wish there was a lot more to it but it was a lot of things weren't explained just kind of it was okay I give it a I give it a a six (laughs) so what was it maybe you saw What's that? You said you saw a meme. Well, actually, Joel, you said you saw a meme. Oh, uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was Shia LaBeouf, and he was like jamming out in the car, smoking like some weed with like his hair like thrown back, and uh, yeah, and it said something like uh, when when you finally pipe uh when you finally pipe after you've been like her brother for years or something like that <laughs> and he's like jamming out like to this like hardcore like rap did y'all, song about hitting did it. y'all see the reading of uh fast times at ridgemont high with shia labeouf no i didn't no dude he i think he stole the show he was <laughs> it was good dude like dane cook oh, fucking name drop dane cook he puts <laughs> he put together this huge hollywood reading and sean penn was in it like matthew oh, mcconaughey penn. there was a lot of celebrities on there it was like a uh, not a skype call a zoom call All star cast oh uh-huh. and shia labeouf was of course smoking weed and he was jeff spicoli because at the beginning he doesn't have a shirt on and you're like what what is he doing he's like jamming out to music and then when it's his scene it's like the no shirt no shoes no dice so he's like oh he has to put his shirt on to get inside the restaurant at the beginning but he was fucking hilarious in that thing that script reading um adam uh, you seen any uh any decent memes since you were asking me about memes Huh, actually, I've probably seen a whole bunch of them. Let me pull up my my meme folder on my phone. Oh, shit. I think I just Hold disconnected. <laughs> Wait, y'all still see me? Okay, cool. Hold on. What's up, Raymond? No, I was just saying he has a meme folder. Yeah, I know. That's my pretty elaborate. Phone. Probably make a meme about your meme folder. <laughs> <laughs> my wife like, calls herself the meme queen, so. 
Dude, I'm gonna create a meme. It's gonna have like this like really uptight like dude like freaking out over a briefcase and he's he's gonna be like, Hold on, let me find my meme folder. <laughs> so I just looked at one good one right now. It was actually one of those it's a meme that shows uh, I think it's R. Schwarzenegger running with a shirt off and everything, and it's showing like time travels invented, girls. Oh great, now I get to go and relive the best moments with my ex guys. No harambe, get away from that kid. <laughs> I saw one with Harambe today where it was like, it just show, showed him like coming out of his cave and going back in. And it said, uh, uh, wake up in the morning, uh, go outside, see women, day ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've no just disrespect seeing, to women. Uh, I've been seeing uh, a lot of the fly memes from the um, from Kamala Harris and uh, Pence's... Uh, what was that catastrophe called? The the fly. Did you watch the um, the debate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fly that landed on Pence's head during the oh. debate. There's just been a did bunch of guys, memes about that. Did you guys see the meme about the fly landing on Pence's head, set to the plot and tune of the Fleetwood Mac "Ocean Spray" guy? No, no, I haven't so, seen. So so it shows Pence talking about the veterans and then it zooms into the fly and as it zooms into the fly you can see that it's a little CGI fly and he's like <laughs> dancing on a skateboard drinking ocean spray and and Pence's voice starts like getting lowered and then Fleetwood Mac starts fading in it's fucking <laughs> awesome dude I got to see that one <laughs> <laughs> it's on my Instagram. The first thing I told my wife when I saw that fly land on his head, of course, I took a picture and I thought I was like, oh, nobody's going to know this, this. And then I told her, <laughs> I was like, and I told her, I was like, I'm going to see so many. We're going to see so many memes about this tomorrow. Watch. And she was like, nah, they're already coming up. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> dude, that whole thing broke the Internet. Dude. There's a, I, I can think of a handful of times in, in, in Internet history that it's been broken. And that was one of them. Yeah, it's, it's just funny how like with our current society, like we're having a debate about you know important issues, but in the fly lands or like some guy shows up in a red sweater and people are like, oh, that's all I can think about. Like, I, who cares about the debate? Like, oh, I was paying attention to the debate and oh, yeah, I know. Pence, Pence, yeah, he, he was, he, he, he wasn't even answering questions. He was just talking about. He kept he loves like kissing her ass a, a couple times just to like evade the question. It was like, oh, well, I remember, you know, I think you're, you know, you do a great job. And when you got the nomination, I called you and she was just smiling like, OK, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? It has nothing to do with what you were just asked. But that's Pence, though. He's yeah, he's Trump's little lackey. You know, that's, but the whole thing is kind of like hypnotic. And here I am going back to kind of like, in a way, my conspiracy theories. But it's like, I find myself watching those debates sometimes. And like halfway through, like, I understand the concepts. I mean, I'm smart enough to know what they're talking about. But like, I'm like, I'm just focusing on what they're saying right now. And then by the time we get to whatever he's saying five seconds later, I've completely forgotten what he or she said before that. And it's like, you're living in the moment, but there's no, I don't know. Like I just get hypnotized by it. There's no like a uh, big picture processing going on, I guess. You know what I mean? There's no problem solving. There's no act. Like it's just, it's like the way Pence was talking, kind of like just bullshit, uh, that really doesn't have a lot of substance to it. Mm -hmm. Well, you can tell him and Trump follow the same, like the same book because they don't ask questions. They interrupt, you know, he didn't granted. He didn't interrupt nearly as much as uh, Trump did, but he was told a few times, like, after, like, okay, that's enough. Stop Mr. Vice president. And he just kept talking and talking. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. It was just, I don't know if you said anything bad about Trump or anything. He just kind of just went to the defense like, oh, well, Trump will blah, blah, blah. Like, I know Trump would never let that happen. And oh, Yeah, I, I think you can really judge a person's character based off of like how willing to follow like rules and formats. Like not, not to say that you shouldn't break a few rules here and there, like to remain competitive. But, you know, when you when, when you have like a blatant disrespect for structure in that way. Like, yeah. I think it speaks volumes on, on your character. 
And the only time that Kamala Harris like broke that was when Pence interrupted her for like, and she was like, no, I need to finish this because he yeah, took 30 that. seconds away from me. So I'm going to finish what I'm saying. And the moderator is like, okay, like, cool. It's like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's, but of, you know, of course that's going to be interpreted on the other side as like, uh, there being some kind of conspiracy, uh, by the media, you know? Yeah. What's funny is once they're done, you know, because it seems like they hate each other. But once they're done, they they're both with their spouse and they they wave to each other like I like and you see them kind of talking and smiling at each other. It's just like, yeah, it's it's politics. Yeah. yeah. Are you all going to do early voting? I am, but I'm going to wait a little bit later on just because I know like with everything going on, like trying to sue to like decrease early voting and everything. I'm going to wait to the point where it's early, but not early enough so they can try to throw my vote out. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to go sometime this week because there's a library that does all Bear County that's literally like a block away from our house. So we're going to take turns voting. Yeah, this... that's a good idea. Well, tomorrow's Columbus Day, so probably, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, Adam, I want to thank you for coming and uh, hanging out with us. Uh, I was impressed with you, and you're always welcome to come back for the all right, but actually, I think April should be up next. She's she's got a few interesting things to say too. So you well, just uh, her. Yeah, yeah, we're we're definitely gonna get April on here for sure, <laughs> man, for sure. So uh, let her know for me that uh, that that uh, I'll I'll touch base with her in a couple of days, and we can get her scheduled. All right, cool. Yeah, and she has a better, she has a more friendly voice than I do, a more radio friendly ah. voice than I do. <laughs> Nah, it's all good, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, dude, I, I'm excited for that one too because we're gonna be talking about, you know, a lot of crazy occult shit, you know, and ghostly stuff. And April's had a a, a lot of unique experiences. Yes, yes. and Very I think you should actually talk to her about that um, because I always think there's some people that are more in tune to those kind of things that happen uh, around us. I'm obviously not in tune. I don't pick up on a lot of that stuff. But she does, and I know that she's talking about them and everything. So yeah, she got, she's got a couple of good stories to tell. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely gonna bring um, April V on um, very very soon. So that's gonna be fun. Uh, Raymond, any parting words as we get out uh, of here? No, it was good, oh. man. Appreciate you coming on, Adam. It was fun. Good to meet you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hey, and uh, and. Uh, you guys have each other Skype now, so if uh, if you want to run parallel or do anything like that, uh, I would be super excited to hear that episode as well. Yeah, man, maybe you can get on um, uh, my podcast. Yeah, definitely. That'd be cool. So check it out. I want to get I want to get a, a a setup like y'all do, so that way I'll be on video next time. I don't want to just be in the corner and y'all see like Arabella's drawings all over the place, but I want to get, I might not even get a working microphone, just a fake microphone. So it looks like I'm all important and everything. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> you sounded like good. You microphone. sounded good. I think you guys, uh, hopefully as long as there's not a lot of lag, you guys, I think will be impressed with, uh, the final product I got. Uh, I, cool. I, I, I'm kind of bringing the video in, in a unique way and you guys will see it. So uh, just experimenting, dude. This shit, like you think it would be easy enough, and Raymond, you can vouch for this to buy a mic, a, a, a computer, and 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 some headphones and make this happen. But it starts getting complex as shit really quick. Yeah, I had a brain fart whenever we were trying to all three of us connect. I was like, I know this is how you do it, and then I figured it out, and then you didn't answer, so I called you back again. And um, Adam was on hold for a good few minutes. So I was like, all right, fuck, let me bring him back. Yeah, and like, yeah. you start with Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I uh, you're, I'm going to have to, <laughs> what's that? No, I'm like, Oh, we forgot Adam. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, well, we're going to get out of here. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes to, uh, to fade us out. And, uh, and, and we'll see you guys back on Squawk Out real quick. Uh, for those of you guys that are uh, listening who made it this long, uh, Bitcoin now trading at $11,390.20. And uh, the market's been up over the last, uh, well, over the podcast. And so, uh, but we'll talk about that more on the stream later. Uh, my name is Joel Benavides. I'm at Joel Benavides on Twitter. This is Squawk Out. You can find it on all the main platforms. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Cheers. Just give me a few minutes, guys.